Hello and welcome again to another course around the Identity Manager. In this very specific course, we will talk about Angular Web Development. For all people out there who are not really interested in coding, this is the wrong course for you. Especially because I like to say the majority of screens we will see are front ends where you have to enter a lot of code. Additionally to that, this course comes with a little bit more information. That means please look into the description. There you will find the one or the other link you may find helpful. Having that said, let's start with that specific course. As you already know, in version 8.0 of the Identity Manager, first time an operation support portal was released and that operation support portal was based on a new technology that was called Angular Technology. All behind that is the idea that the web designer technology we use since today for our standard portals is proprietary and because of that hard to learn. A lot of people promised, especially partners and some customers, that if we use a market standard technology like Angular development is, we are better from a resource perspective, that means it is easier for them to find developers can do the job to customize the standard web portal of the Identity Manager. Because of that, years ago, we started to develop a new technology or to integrate a new technology called Angular in our web development and to rebuild our standard web portal in a way that it is available as web designer portal, this is the old world, and as of course, Angular-based web standard portal, which is the new world. With version 8.2.1 of the Identity Manager, first time, now you can check out from the GitHub a repository which contains the new standard web portal of the Identity Manager. This makes it pretty important that we start now with a video series which will show you all around the Angular web development from an Identity Management perspective. Again, important to understand. If you like to be a web developer for Angular web development, then you need a lot of more education than you can get here in this channel. We will show you mostly what is available for the identity manager in case of Angular web development. But all the other knowledge that means your skill set around cascading style sheets, HTML, Git, of course, REST-based web services and Angular, that is something you can't learn here. Therefore, you need to go to some other platforms, for example, to Udemy or to YouTube or to LinkedIn Learning or where you can find all of these courses. Whatever courses you attend at the end, hopefully you have the skill set to be able to develop front ends using Angular. In this very specific scenario, the following waits for you. As you easily can see, part one of the story will be a little bit an introduction, what we will do there. And of course, we will install and configure a standard client to develop Angular web fronts. This is something we show so that consultants like me are able to find their first steps into the world of Angular. In part two, we will then continue with these baby steps and we will just develop a very, very tiny identity management. At the end, the only thing we want to show is how you can do your first steps in Angular and how that will look like and how the complete equipment we configured in part one is to use. Both, that means part one and two, are something which are painful from my perspective for a real Angular developer. These guys will of course not need people like me, which are more or less identity and access management consultants, just to explain them the world of Angular. This is, that means part one and two, more for people like the project people outside, just running these identity and access governance systems and are not really web developers. But please be then careful with part three and part four. In part three, we will show you how to develop stuff in Angular regarding to the identity matter front end, how to add on stuff, how to change stuff, and of course, how to build front ends more or less from the scratch. In part four of the story, we will then talk about the backend development. 
Backend development means to extend the basis of all of that frontend development, which is the API server of the identity manager. Both, that means part three and four this time, are for Angular web developers, of course. There you should have a look at so that you get an idea how Angular works together with the identity manager. Having that said, a small apology to all of these Angular developers outside watching that video series. Please focus on part three and four of the series and just skip part one and two. These baby steps are only for people who don't know something about Angular, of course. Nevertheless, I had a lot of fun just creating that video series and before we start with some hands-on, I like to show you a little bit about the new technology and all the steps you need to know about. First, let's talk about the differences between web designer and Angular web development, of course. On the left upper, you can see the Identity Manager database. The Identity Manager database contains all the content we have to maintain, especially with web fronts. To do so, in the past, there was the application server, which was a REST-based web service. And this application server was talking to a web designer web application. And that web designer web application was maintained by a very specific tool, web designer. Very typical for that type of technology was that web designer was something like a visual studio for identity manager web fronts. And with that, it was possible to completely create, configure and maintain these web applications and these web fronts. Web designer, that was the pity, was at the end a proprietary tool. That means a very stall learning curve was there to achieve. And after that, it was possible to work with. On the market, only a handful of web designer experts exist. Because of that, a lot of decision makers made the decision that we have to move from web designer to a completely new but available technology, which is, of course, Angular based web development. We all know there are mostly two frameworks on the market available, one from Facebook and one, of course, from Google. And we decided at the end to use Angular. However, Angular is based on a server which is called the API server, which is as well a REST-based service. And the first question to answer is why, of course, we have not used the application server as REST-based backend for our Angular web fronts. The reason is quite easy. The application server, it's a server which provides a REST API and that REST API is based on the database structure. To talk to that API or to use this API, you have to know about the Identity Manager database model. That means the database model, all the tables and columns to access the right objects and entities and collections and however. This is a little bit very hard to a standard Angular web developer who has no clue about the Identity Manager and all of its hundreds of tables and columns. Because of that, developers decided just to create another web service, which is the API server web service, and that is as well REST-based. This web service is completely free of database structure artifacts. This REST service is more use case based. At the end, it is an abstraction from the identity manager database model. Because of that, it is perfectly to be used from people doing Angular web development. Unfortunately, in difference to Web Designer, which was the only tool to do something, for Angular web development, you need some more tools. And because of that, there is a web development tool set necessary. And that web development tool set will help you at the end to create your front ends. We will as well talk about some other stuff that means the API server as well in the future. And that means we have to talk about something that is backend development again. We have a front end that is the application Angular based and that front end can be just created, maintained and of course extended by web developers. There is as well a back end, which is the API server and that back end can as well be extended. For example, you can increase the API and add more functionality to it. This is something we have to discuss as well. That is part four of the story. 
Last but not least, don't forget, there are a couple of client tools available to work with the Identity Manager, because the web frontend is only the rest that means one end of the complete application. Identity Manager is a solution framework where you can do a lot of things with many frontends of course and all of that is completely not touched or described in that specific video series. There you can look at our YouTube channel and in the YouTube channel you will then find the one or the other video around that. All the errors between the different colored boxes are the errors how to connect to each other. And one thing might be of interest as well. As you easily can see per web application it is possible to talk to a REST based service. And as you easily can see here it is possible on the one hand side that the API server talks to the app server and the app server to the database in the same way then the API server talks directly to the database. More or less the same for client tools for example left lower they can talk to the app server which is talking to the identity manager database or they can directly talk to the database. Why this is all necessary and all possible it is at the end how to ease or speed up things. If you want to be more secure you will have more middleware that means you will have for example three tier architecture part of a data store which is the database an application which is the application server and a presentation tier which is then for example a front end. Nevertheless all of these things exist but for the front end development they are not that important because of that please have a look at all the other things. Now let's talk a little bit about the roles necessary just to work with Angular frontends and develop these web applications. In the past we had just one role and that was the role of people using web designer. Very often I like to say identity governance and administration consultants working with the identity manager and on top of this skill set they just implemented their web designer knowledge. With the help of this they was able to change, maintain, configure all these web applications web designer based. Now with the angular based web development we at the end split that big role into two smaller roles. One role is the role of front end developers. These are the people using angular. These are angular web developers of course. They know about rest services, they know about html, cascading style sheets, angular of course and of course git. And they all knew use that knowledge together with the REST service, the API server, to develop the frontends. The other role are the backend developers. Backend developers are people which are familiar with the identity manager, they know about the data structure and they are able to write C sharp code, they know about REST services and can as well work with Git. These guys will change the backend, that means they will change the API server or improve this functionality. Now finally let's talk about the web development toolset. And this time we are talking about a toolset used from front-end developers. Back-end developers might use parts of that toolset but the big variety of tools are necessary for our front-end developers. Angular web front-end development of course needs Angular. And Angular to get packages installed needs of course something which is called the node package manager npm. Both of them are together combined in a very fancy tool which is called node.js. Node.js is more or less the development platform for Angular developer. If you look into the internet you will easily see there is the Angular website just talking about Angular and you can find all about Angular just there. You will as well find the Node's package manager as a single tool and Node package manager shows how to use it and how to download it. But the good message is it is possible to get both of these simple tools by just installing Node.js. To do so the only thing is to download Node.js and to install that on your machine. This is Node.js for Windows. And of course as you can see there are two versions available. One is the current version and the other is the LTS. One identity suggests to use the LTS if you want to install or if you want to work with our identity manager frontends. 
The only reason for of course is that LTSs typically are a little bit more stable than the current development snapshot. However, if you have installed these Node.js tools, then the next thing is that you need some more tools. There's a code editor necessary and we just suggest to use Visual Studio Code. It is possible, of course, to use many other editors as well. Atom, for example, or other tools like Notepad++ can be used. Writing Angular text is nothing other else than writing, of course, text files. And so you can use every of these editors supporting somehow Angular development. Why I talk about supporting Angular development? Because it is much more fun if you have syntax highlighting available or code suggestions available, which can help you to write your code. We identified Visual Studio Code as a perfect match, especially because you can easily just increase the functionality of Visual Studio Code by adding as many plugins as you need and want to extend the functionality of code. And nevertheless, code itself, it's a perfect text editor for big text files and to, I like to say, debug projects based on code. Because of this, we suggest to use Visual Studio Code. If you don't want to do that, it's up to you, but then you have to find something similar. Additionally to Visual Studio Code, you need, of course, a repository. And typically, Git is used for web development and other development much more often than other repositories like, for example, Subversion and others. However, Git exists as well on a web page called Git SCM. You can see it there. You can download a version for Windows and you will have it on your machine. And you can then clone stuff from the internet, maintain it on your hard disk, store changes locally and push them later on into the repository again. However, this is necessary to be able to step back to different checkpoints to ensure that if you mess up something, it could be repaired by getting the older version. That is one of the reasons why you need, of course, such a repository system. Last tool here in the set is a tool that helps to deal with REST services. We all know REST services typically come with a Swagger front end and the Swagger front end, which is on the one hand side, the documentation is on the other hand side, as well a chance just test the one or the other call of the REST service. Unfortunately, Swagger is nice, but it is not really handy if you have on a daily basis to work with REST services, to check and to test and to work around with calls and such. Because of that, tools like Postman was implemented. Postman is a wonderful REST service test and development tool. And because of that, Postman is used by a lot of people working with these services. We just suggest to use Postman together with all the other tools as you easily can see, there is a wonderful website of Postman and on that Postman website, you can download then the Postman client tool, which will allow you to do all what I told about web services. This is what we at the end like to install and pre-configure on an admin workstation. And that is what we will do in a few seconds. I will install the complete tool set as it is here on the screen and configure it. Again, all of that is just a suggestion. That means there are other sets as well possible leading to similar effects. The only thing that is necessary is to ensure that you can develop Angular web portals. All of that, of course, what you see in during the next seconds is knowledge that has nothing to do with our identity manager or another one identity tool. It is just stuff which is necessary so that you can develop Angular web fronts. First time in part three of the video series, we will talk about content, which is identity manager specific. And now please just follow me to the screen and let's install something.